This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. All right, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy at Think Tech. Wow. And, you know, you missed out because we've been having a very rivaled conversation up to this point with uh, the Associate Dean of the William S. Richardson School of Law, Denise Antolini, and I left, and Richard Walsgrove, Assistant Professor, Visiting Assistant Professor at the Law School. Congratulations, Richard. Oh, and, you. of course, my co-host and co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Sharon Moriwaki. Sharon and I spent the day at the <laughs> legislature learning so much about what, <laughs> what happens and doesn't happen there. Yeah. Hi, well, Sharon. Hi, Richard. Right. Hi, Denise. Oh, oh, thanks for being on. <laughs> so we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about um, climate change today. We talked about climate change, gee, uh, at least in one uh, program at the legislative briefing last Tuesday, the 10th, I think it was. Um, and we, uh, Denise was there and she spoke about it. And so we're going to pursue that conversation. We're going we're gonna to look at climate change. So the first part of the show, I would like to ask you guys, um, what are we talking about? Because um, climate change does is one of the, it's a can. It's a can that gets kicked down the road, mm -hmm. you know, forever. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, until we get a really bad storm, then people finally wake up about the can. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what is it that we're talking about? What are we concerned about that we need to, you know, make mm, new regulations, statutes, mm -hmm. policy about? What mm -hmm. is it? So uh, one of the things I like to do is not talk so much about climate change, but the climate crisis. Okay, fair. Um, because I think a lot of people think, well, the climate always changes, and they confuse weather mm -hmm. and climate, mm -hmm. and they... Yeah. Yeah. So I really do think we have a climate crisis, and I think the recent, you know, um, conventions on climate change say we're, you know, we're about to break some passing points. Um, so what does that mean for the average citizen in Hawaii? It means sea level rise, which we already start to see evidence of and we'll talk more about. Um, more concentrated severe rain, the more increased likelihood of severe hurricanes. If you look at the hurricane maps, we've just been very fortunate to have missed severe hurricanes recently. Um, and it means drying um, forests, um, drought, so real severe changes in our weather patterns coming up. And since we're an island community, we should be more concerned about all of those changes than, um, you know, we can't necessarily import water easily. And so we have to, I think we're really close to seeing those changes in the king tides that have happened recently, mm, where yeah, we see, thing, yeah. so there's a lot going on now. There's signs that are happening now that we really are at the beginning of a climate crisis, in my view. Is the crisis here or everywhere? Oh, I think it's everywhere. Um, but each region of the globe experiences a little bit differently. So some areas are going to dry out. Some are going to get wetter. Um, but in, in sea level rise, particularly in Asia Pacific and the Asia, Southeast Asia is going to be more severe than here. But we're going to kind of be at the center of the storm for a lot of these impacts. Storm so is the operative doing, word. What yeah. are we doing about it? And what can we do about it? <laughs> We're going to go to that in the second part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so let me ask Richard, what's the time frame on all of this? So, so I, I put climate change uh, action into two buckets. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I give them names, and I apologize in advance that I geek out on these names. We can adapt to climate change, we call that climate change adaptation, and we can mitigate climate change, climate change mitigation. Adaptation is the idea that we have to, we, we are living in a changing climate, we need to adapt to that changing climate. Mitigation is the idea that we keep changing the climate, and someday we have to stop. Uh, so what's our timeline on those two things? Uh, today, we need to start today on both of those things. We have to adapt to the change we're seeing, the king tides. You know, we didn't hear much about stop. this in the legislature today as we walked around <laughs> and you say today, um, what does today mean? I mean, do, do we, should we go back to the legislature later this afternoon and speak to those people? <laughs> you and I, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, it, this could happen this summer. You know, we discussed last week, uh, you know, about the fact that this is an El Nino year. Yeah. Um, and it could come upon us just as quick as 8.07 in the morning on a Saturday with 18 mm. minutes to spare, if you don't mind me referring yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, parts of it are more distant than other parts, but parts of it are very close, I think. Mm. Yeah. One of the keys is we can't get trapped in just responding to a, a, an immediate crisis and then the next immediate crisis and the next immediate crisis. We, we need to have a plan that we put in place over a period of time. If we bounce from crisis to crisis, we'll always be at 8.09 a.m. on Saturday morning, and that wasn't a very happy place to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So what's the state of public awareness on this, Denise? Mm. I mean, I know the law schools where obviously guys are invested in the issue because it's part of environmental and it's also mm -hmm. part of, it's kind of, kind of the law schools, I you know, say, responsibility mm -hmm. to keep up on this because it leads to public policy. We're going to talk yes. about that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what is the state of public awareness right now? The legislature and the public, in some ways, they're the same. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, you, first of all, it is our Kulian at the law school to keep up on this along with other units at the university, and we're, we're happy to have that responsibility. Um, and it's a big responsibility, but the, the collaboration is really good. So there's a lot of great stuff happening at the university. I would say that most people perceive climate change as a result of severe weather impacts, or maybe they've seen a king tide, and it's kind of shocking when you go to Mapunapuna and you see, you know, fish swimming through the streets, or your car gets stalled, um, or along the North Shore we have severe beach erosion. I mean, really severe beach erosion, or um, Haula, you know, or there's so where you s visibly see it, I think people start to get concerned. The other thing is I think people who have been born and raised here probably have more awareness because they've seen the change over time. And they will say, oh, my lychee are spiking earlier. My mango are flowering earlier. You know, the, the, the yellow trees are, it's January and the trees are flowering. It used to be March. So just those kind of normal day-to-day -day changes of the seasons are happening at different times. So I think if we speak in terms of common visible changes, people mm. can relate to that mm. much easier than they can charts and mm. graphs. Mm. But it is happening. Those It's an ecological calendar that's happening around us. We just need to pay a little more attention. But you talk to farmers, you talk to people who mm. garden, people who pay attention to the, their trees and to the coastline, and, and they know things are, things are changing more rapidly than they used to. Do they yeah. connect this, these phenomena with climate change? Um, or uh, remember, remember Donald Trump, remember him? I, I, no, I don't know who he is. I hate to invoke <laughs> him on this, but you know, he denies climate change. And some of his friends in Congress, they deny climate change. Yeah. And you know, I don't think it doesn't have any effect on me when they deny it, mm -hmm. because I know they're wrong, but other people may say, well, you know, maybe there's a chance mm -hmm. that there is no climate change. Maybe mm -hmm. there's a chance these phenomena are just the, the phenomena are just re repeating, you know, part of the natural cycle, mm -hmm. the sine curve comes and goes. Mm -hmm. um, are people affected by what he has been saying and his denial and the denial of his <laughs> friends on climate change? Is that part of public awareness? I think in Hawaii we're sort of lucky that folks are a little more connected to the outside and what's happening. And so I don't feel like we see as much of that here as you might see in other parts of the country. There's, there's a lot of interesting work done on how people perceive those, those different influences. Um, and you see some of it in parts of the country you might expect, parts of the country that have, have voted for the Donald Trumps of the world, and they want to relate to that message. Why he doesn't typically vote for the Donald Trumps, we want to relate to the other message. I, I don't think that means that there isn't still this natural tendency for all of us to bury our heads in the sand because it's such a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Denise, I, I'll ask you a question I asked you on, yeah. on February t uh, January 10th, and that is, uh, so what can we do here in our, in our little wee island? I mean, <laughs> if everybody behaved themselves, if everybody was you know, completely religious about you know, minimizing cl climate change, mm -hmm. it still wouldn't really have a big effect on the world. Mm -hmm. no? Well, I want to go back to something Richard said, which is we have these two opportunities. One, to mitigate, which is to reduce our emissions, which we need to do as a responsible community. So if that means driving electric cars and taking the bus and, you know, changing the way we manage power plants and all that. We need to do that no matter what, just as a responsible community. But adaptation, there's a lot we can do because we haven't done very much so far. <laughs> so making our highways more resilient, um, working on our infrastructure so it can survive sea level rise, um, you know, reforestation so that we continue to capture as much rainfall as possible. You know, in more than a hundred years ago, when the the inner parts of the islands were being deforested for sandalwood and all kinds of harvesting, uh, the sugar plantations knew that the watershed was being depleted, and so there was this hurry up effort to create forest reserves and to reforest. So we know from our past that we can replenish our water supply by reforestation. So we need, we know what we need to do. So I think going back to your earlier point about the common person's understanding, I mean, I think that puts more responsibility on the legislature 
that is their job, <laughs> mm -hmm. to be in front of these issues and to understand how the science, the policy, and the law work together. So I'm hopeful that they will finally start to see that we really have the tools, and Hawaii of all places has the tools to take action in concrete areas in ways that can be replicated. So we are a leader. We need to accept that responsibility mm. and act like it. Yeah. Um, so last yeah, year, last year the, mm -hmm. the legislature passed the uh, commission for mm -hmm. adaptation and mitigation. Um, I'm just wondering, and they have met, mm -hmm. and, and whether there are any policies that came out of that that were really fundamental, that we really, really need to do this. I mean, have you sensed any of that? Or at the UH, do you also have a Well, I actually uh, need to re read the report, which just came out. Oh, I think it came out the before. day that we had our yeah, conference or something, so I, it's ready for, their, for me to read. But um, to me, that's the next step, is to use the very good work that they've done, um, that the legislature mm -hmm. asked them to do, and now also the legislature needs to pay attention to that. So I am. Um, so I, I need to dive into it, but it, yeah, I think That's we need good. to pay direct attention to that. A lot of work went into it. A lot of excellent people contributed. So let's all read That's it good. and let's have a legislative briefing just on that report. It's probably idea. already scheduled. I I hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good, good. And then yeah. we really should get some some recommendations that you folks have all discussed at the legislature back on Think Tech. We can hear more yeah. about, you know. I think it's, you know, th and this came up in the, in the program in the, the legislative briefing was about planning. And I think mm -hmm. planning is a sort of dangerous uh, excuse <laughs> not to do things, right? Let's make a plan. Yeah. You don't have to do anything, just make a plan. And as a result, the plan gets dusty, goes on a dusty shelf, nothing Well, part happens. of it is doing a good plan and then following the plan. <laughs> what well, happens yeah. is the plan does sit on the shelf. So in chapter yeah. one, it's yeah. what we have to do right now, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I, I really, I take your point as to, uh, we may not be able to affect climate change globally, but we can certainly affect the risks and the implications of mm -hmm. it here locally. Mm -hmm. We can save ourselves. I think we have the opportunity to do that. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things I hope we'll talk about is microgrids a little bit and solar and our ambitious energy goals. And there's a reason why we can be more ambitious in an island mm -hmm. community because we all need to hang together. And there's an opportunity for experimentation in a climate where there's a lot of support. There, we know there's a lot of support for solar, for example. We know we have grid issues. We know that people like to innovate in Hawaii. And, you know, and we know what's going on in Puerto Rico now, which pr the crisis provides an opportunity. So we don't need that crisis. Mm -hmm. We don't need a hurricane to wipe mm -hmm. us out to create that opportunity. We can innovate and leap ahead now. Yeah. And we have some great entrepreneurs here. There's a lot of activity going on in Hawaii. Yeah. So going back to plans, we need action plans. <laughs> action, <laughs> action plans. Action plans. Action plans. Action plans. Yeah, the briefing. Not action just planning. Plans, yeah. Action plans and yeah. timelines, short term, medium term, long term. Yeah. And let's go. Let's invest. Yeah. Um, let's invest yeah. this session. So your, your speech that lingo mm -hmm. and um, you know we had some other people at, the, at this program on the 10th that are speaking that lingo but um, is it sufficient you know you have to have multiple voices the legislature did not go home and at 2 o'clock in the morning come up with an idea about how to do this they always say come and talk to me give mm -hmm. me your ideas bring me your your tired and huddled masses mm -hmm. and I will act on that um, so we have to you know put pressure on them yeah? Yeah. who's putting pressure on them right now Richard don't say Blue Planet Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of gr groups like Blue Planet Foundation that are putting pressure on the legislature. But I don't think that's who the legislature listens to. Mm -hmm. They listen to voters. We're in an election year. We all need to put pressure on our legislators. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I think we can have specific ideas. The idea of plans, uh, you're right, none of us go home at night and dream up plans for climate change. <laughs> I'd like to propose, based on the legislation from last year, we need a budget. We need a carbon budget. Mm -hmm. We all understand what a budget is. And w there are a certain number of tons of carbon dioxide that we as a state can emit from now until infinity that allow us not to ruin our climate, destroy our atmosphere. We need that budget. Uh, there are a lot of folks in the state who have that expertise. The legislature could adopt that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so, okay, a month so from now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the university is talking about this. Mm -hmm. We heard from Chip Fletcher, yeah. been talking about it a long time, you know. first in the context of uh, sea level rise and inundation, now in the context of extreme weather, which is actually more immediate. I yeah. mean, look at next summer. It's been nice knowing you guys. <laughs> 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 we'll make it, Jay. We'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, who else is talking? You got SOS talking, you got the law school talking, mm -hmm. you got some of the 
foundations talking. Mm -hmm. Who is putting the pressure on right now? Well, I'm hoping that the conservation community will make a big push because mm -hmm. to me it's, it's absolutely one of the key issues for this session. For example, the barrel tax. Remember the barrel tax? Mm, yeah. yes, yes. Where does that money go? It's 60-40, right? 60% mm -hmm. am I right? Goes That's back to the general fund. That's not the original intention of the barrel tax. And in, in my view, it's time. Inexcusable, were I, you going to say? Yeah, I did a very good wording Th there, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> but at a time when tourism's at an all-time high, breaking records, construction mm. has been at an absolute peak, unemployment is at a very record very low, low. Yeah. where is all the money going? Do we really need 60% of the barrel tax to go to the general fund? It should go back into reforestation and innovation and energy projects. And, and so, I, and I think uh, Chris Lee mentioned that very briefly at the forum. And so this is a year to seize the opportunity to reallocate. If we don't do it now when the, when the economy is healthy. Will we do it later? We'll never mm -hmm. do no. it. Do it now. <laughs> That's right. Well, I knew we would be migrating into the how-to part of our show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, before the break. But now we're going to take the break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back from the break, let's really dive into exactly what you would tell them, mm -hmm. what kind of policies and programs you would want to formulate, and what kind of time frame you would like to have them act and have them create systems that will go into place. Ooh, there's so many issues. <laughs> but we'll try to do all of that in 14 minutes right after this break. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investings, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. You. Two, one. Okay, we have found that on route somewhere between Manoa and here, there are some slides. <laughs> so Denise, can you tell us what the slides depict? Mm -hmm. I wanted to share with you and with everybody watching the, the kind of ongoing saga of Lania Kea um, Beach on the North Shore. So I think most people have driven around the North Shore many, many times and are aware of the traffic problems. But at Lania Kea in particular, you can see severe coastal erosion that's eating away really at the asphalt and the, oh. and the utility poles are tilting. And recently oh with the big surf, you know, they put up all the yellow tape. So you have this absolute disaster there. You've got traffic, bottlenecking, you've got tourists and you know visitors crossing the road, little kids to see the turtles. You've got this very small beach that's being eroded, which is a very unique basking site for the green sea turtle. And you have yellow tape and utility poles and hardening of the shoreline. So it's a, it's a disaster. <coughs> so it's really concerned okay. the community for a long time. And what we're looking for is for this, um, speaking as a North Shore resident, we're looking for the State Department of Transportation to start to work on how to realign the road so it's climate resilient, right? So the so it won't you know, fall into the ocean. Yeah, back, and so back, you know yeah. when you harden the beach, you end up with more scouring and erosion. But now with sea level rise and with our precious beaches disappearing, we need to make room for soft solutions, what are sometimes called nature-based solutions, mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than always putting up concrete and hard walls. So we're we're hopeful that Department of Transportation will start to really aggressively look at this. Yes. That. Thank you for the word picture. I can see <laughs> now, I think I've seen these slides. Yeah. You can see the road is falling out, falling off into the yeah. ocean. It happens. And we can't afford to do that. So, Denise, what is the solution then? Is it like planting or is it moving way back, the road's way back? Well, some what people call this uh, managed retreat. And I don't like particularly like the word retreat, but managing the shoreline in a, in a way that's in sync with the natural processes. So, eventually, nature will have her way, as we know, right? 
and you can't forever stop the way, you know, that even, even along um, other parts of the North Shore, like Sunset Beach, you've seen this severe erosion yeah, that took out part of the bike path this season. Yeah. So it's coming. So we need to move back from the shoreline and allow the shore, shoreline to ebb and flow. So the solution at Lania K is definitely to move the road back, perhaps maybe to elevate it just a bit, um, and to use that area as a park or a buffer, mm. you know, to... On the, Ma to the Mackay side. Yeah, to the move road, people yeah. and vehicles back. That wouldn't be bad at all. Um, mm. I think there's a lot of support for it, and also we have to keep in mind it's a turtle basking area. Yeah. So mm. there is a win-win solution in there yeah. somewhere, if we there's can... There's also condemnation in there somewhere. Mm, and actually, and Hawaii's I don't think so. Yeah, no, because um, Kamehameha Schools is willing. Oh, willing. very important. That's they, very they important. They are willing to work on a solution. So that is oh. a, a, a major step forward. And I think there is going to be a solution there somewhere. But no, they're very willing to um, to work on it. So, so what, is the, the what, what is the paint. challenge? I mean, why hasn't it been done since it seems sort of pretty <laughs> straightforward oh, and reasonable? It's only been a decade um, <laughs> of community meetings and all of that. Well, I think that, um, I don't know, I think Department of Transportation moves slowly um, and they have a certain mission. I think that mission needs to be broader now that climate change, climate crisis is on us. And that traditionally hasn't been kind of part of their uh, vision, but now I think it must be. So maybe, you know, we do have a sustainability tr task force that mm -hmm. may look at that and it's all the roadways, but if that is an issue, that should be brought up to that group that yes. can really help them get the funds. Absolutely. To These things room. need to come together, right? You can't just build highways in the traditional way, we n especially in Hawaii That's along the shoreline. There are many roads. Yeah, it's just many one example. Roads to losing our road system. Yep. So, <clears throat> but you know, talking about the practical side of it, because that's what we want to do here, mm -hmm. um, seems to me that you, you know, if you get Kamehameha Schools to buy into that, then it's just a business deal. And my guess is they would be reasonable, I guess, mm -hmm. I hope. Um, and the State Department of Transportation, they could do this. This is within their mission and the capability to, re, to realign a road. Yes. Um, where I get stuck, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see a way to do this without involving the legislature. Well, right? I have some good news <laughs> for you. So last session, Representative Sean Quinlan, who represents our district, got yeah. $15 million passed in the budget specifically yeah. to move this forward. So, so the money is already available. The money's there. It, it, last session it passed, but that's $15 million is just for the planning. Oh, oh <laughs> my God, planning? really? And there's already been a lot of planning. But I think it's going to oh. be the juice to move it along. So I'm optimistic. You might hear something in the next couple of weeks. Will you tell us about it? <laughs> Follow it. <laughs> fifteen million for the planning. Yeah. If you get to spend fifteen million for the planning, how much do you have to spend to actually do the work? That's a really good question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but we also can't do without our highway. So actually, no. but you know, the, I th the, it points out something that I wanted to get to is so what, what agencies and players do you need to move mm -hmm. in order to do a deal? You, you've got the landowner, mm -hmm. uh, presumably, at least theoretically, you have the Department of Transportation. You have at least planning money. So who else do you need to talk to to get this done? The city and County of Honolulu, they actually have a three acre beach park right there that's a passive park. That oh. needs, <laughs> they need to be part of it. Mm. Fish and Wildlife Service mm. and NOAA because of the turtles and really it's the neighbors as well. And then there's some lessees of Kamehameha Schools land, the ranchers who traditionally enjoyed that area. Um, for good reason, they all need to be involved. So neighborhood board, Community Association, Corps of Engineers, Corps of Engineers <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> Department of Health. It's multi-stakeholder process. So all these process. years, you said you've been working on it all these years. So a lot of people have been working on it for a long time. And those people are still talking? All um, these different agencies and Everybody's groups. really willing to talk. DOT needs to This is a move great it. case study. It is. It is. Yeah. Lania Kea. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And as you said, it's not just Lania Kea, right? I mean, all around the state. Yeah. You know, but if Maui, you get a good yeah. model going on how yeah. everybody so can work let's together. let's make yeah. it a case study, Richard. Okay. <laughs> what do we do starting tomorrow to get this done? Well, you need to ask Denise that question. <laughs> She's far more invested in this. And I, I'm looking from the, the outside, looking in like you two, I say somebody just takes the lead and makes it happen. You, you always need a champion for these sorts of things. And so somebody within the government should be a champion. So is that you a, have a champion? At a yeah. the department, departmental level or the legislature, the executive, where is it? How about all three? Uh, need one. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the guy who picks up the phone <laughs> tomorrow morning. Otherwise, it's going to be <laughs> business as usual. Right? I would say at this point, 
the, the incoming, I su suppose, new head of Department of Transportation, I think we'll need to take up the mantle and run with it. Um, we talked to him. Sharon, Sharon and I, we talked to him, mm -hmm. right? Jay? It's not, not Fujikami. Yeah. No, it's, it's not, Jay. No, it's Jay. Not yeah. Ford yeah. Fujikami. It's yeah. his successor. Yeah. 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 yeah, up for confirmation. Yeah. It would be a great way for him to start. It would be terrific. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay, so that's uh, Lania Kea. There's more, and I, you know, I wanted to add a word to your lexicon. It's resilience, uh, which we talked about on the tenth, um, because that's you know planning for how to recover uh, when when it strikes. I mean, uh, what do we do for that? What kind of policy? What kind of uh, statutory framework, if necessary, do you incorporate for that? A great example in this context, this adaptation context, sea level rise context, yeah. uh, manage retreat for that, that lexicon context, um, is something called a rolling setback. Have you heard of that before? You know, we, we have rules, oftentimes county level rules, but it involves lots of, lots of different agencies and lots of different levels of government. Uh, rules about how close to the shoreline one can build. Mm. And uh, if we recognize that the shoreline is retreating, we should recognize that that, that distance should change or that, that point in, on, in space should change over time. So, so rolling setbacks is this type of, of policy that really allows resilience to happen in coastal development. Mm -hmm. And what, is what? that, do we have that here or is that uh, elsewhere? What, where? We don't have it universally, uh, but there are instances of it. It's been, it's been used actually in specific contexts for specific properties, but it's also in you know, places like Maui, they've, they've managed to, to pass this as, a, as an overarching policy. So should that be a policy? I mean, uh, is that state legislature? Or is that, you know, at the county level, uh, this rolling setback? Primarily a county, a county issue, mm -hmm. but because it's in the coastal zone, the state also has a, a lot to say about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. But that raises an interesting point about county leadership these days. Mm -hmm. They were impressive on the 10th, weren't they? Yeah. It was, yeah. and I think it's interesting because with the whole mm, lack of leadership at the national level, you see a lot more inter international action and a lot more state and local action. So, you know, kudos to those in the state government, you know, the creation of mm -hmm. our climate task force, I'm sure I don't have the name right, but you know, there's movement at the state level and at the county level, and yeah, at the, at the forum, all four counties were taking a lot of innovative action, and you know, I think there's a lot of hope there, because we just need to keep experimenting and doing things and seeing what taking works, action. taking yeah. action. So what's the difference between policy and action? Because I, I see you guys <laughs> as the, the source of policy. <laughs> I see you guys as writing, teaching, you know, coming on shows like this and talking about what the policy should be, you know, sort of as a, as a point of nutrition for those who have to digest it and do something about it. So shouldn't the law school, for example, be a source of policy points? Uh, is it a source? Are you already doing that? I. It's always great to have a law school involved in policy and writing legislation or contributing to policy in some way, but I actually think we have really good policies in Hawaii. Um, so I don't, you know, given the limited amount of energy that everybody has, I'd rather put it into implementation mm -hmm. and execution. That's where I think we're really lacking. I think we have good policies. We have an ambitious energy goal. Um, we have. Um, good environmental laws. We have really good environmental laws. So where, laws. where does the law school fit in the implementation part? Uh, first of all, training excellent lawyers <laughs> who can go out into the community. Those who can write statutes. Yeah, or, or get involved in counseling businesses or starting, uh, you know, counseling startups. And, and it doesn't matter if they go to Bishop Street or to a nonprofit or to the legislature. Um, we have them all across the board, but if they're if they're motivated and passionate, which they are, about taking their skills and seeing something happen, and actually, I would say in the last couple of years, particularly with Richard there and some of our other faculty, we're very oriented toward, you know, giving them the skills that they can start taking. Sending them action. out in order to yeah. save us. Not just write policies. Mm -hmm. I got it. it. Actually, got it. to do it. You know, you on know? the way on the way to the show, and we were a couple of minutes behind where we wanted to be. Sharon mm -hmm. and I ran into a class. Uh, which is right outside school. on Fourth Street oh. with their professor from the UH School of Architecture. Oh, great. And they all demonstrated, it was really wonderful few minutes, they demonstrated their projects to us. Oh, and they I were know. so, you know, wide-eyed and uh, vital yeah, and so it was, it was just great to yeah. talk to them. <laughs> Each one, you know, had a project and it was all about sustainability, it was That's all about great. building a better community. I said to myself, if these guys can, you know, get distributed around the architecture, 
yeah. architectural firms, they will have an effect. Yeah. So I put this to you, Richard. What is your class like? What, can you give us a, sort of a profile of how these students are thinking about these and issues? And the class you taught last year, uh, too, yeah. I will, I will tell you about yeah. a, a group of folks that I met yesterday for the first time in my clean energy law and policy course. And there is a broad spectrum of folks that are planning to go into commercial development, folks that are planning to go into the nonprofit world. Um, they're full of energy. They're brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, to a person, this class is full of brilliant people. And I convinced them, I hope, in two and a half hours we spent together yesterday, that the transition we need to take to solve climate change, the mitigation side of it, it's going to happen over the course of their career. It's mm -hmm. a 30-year time frame. I'm going back to the question you asked, what's our timeline? We have, we have less than 30 years to act, but we will have to have completely reinvented ourselves over the course of the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that's their career. They graduate in May, mm -hmm. and then things get started. It's I'm perfect. I'm very excited for that group of people, but if they won't do it alone, we need to have the support of everybody. Sure. And so, what kind of projects were they interested in, or where where would you seed them? You know, when, it, when they go out, <laughs> when they go out into the world in May, what what, what did you you know what did, can you gather well, as to where they're seeding? Yesterday, we talked about the state's clean energy targets. I'm a huge fan. I think that they they got that I was a huge <laughs> fan, and I got 12 critics who came back at me and pointed out all the ways we can fix our clean energy targets to make them more implementable, to make them more actionable. Should have been there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should. It was, it was Bring really them neat. on to the show the next time. <laughs> we should also mention, uh, Richard taught a class previously um, that focused on energy legislation and brought the students down to the legislature. Uh, you know, wow. that's really See important. See how sausage is made. Yeah. yeah. We have um, <laughs> Mike Wallerstein from the Public Utilities Commission teaching public utilities mm. law because the students need to know the nuts and bolts That's of great. public utilities law. So we're trying to do more hands-on, you great. know, That's and um, I th this, the students know this is a really hot area of the law. Not only are there jobs there, but as Richard said, they get to make a difference. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. It's within yeah. their career that they get to yeah. make a difference. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. Well, this is a perfect storm. Mm. It's double on time. <laughs> it's a perfect storm for the issue and for them, those mm -hmm. students, and for the law school, for that matter. By the way, let me just say, great appointment, good job. Today. <laughs> <laughs> we think so. <laughs> we're happy. So, sure, we're out of time. It's time for you, as the as a co-host of the program, to summarize all of oh this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, first of all, I love what you're doing at the law school, Richard, bringing clean energy and really what you're doing, climate change, mm -hmm. adaptation, mitigation, but also training the next generation. Oh, mm -hmm. that is so exciting. And, and really doing what you're doing out in the community and bringing it into the classroom because that's how you get the students very, very committed to doing good mm -hmm. in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think we need to have the law school back with your students next. <laughs> and, and what is the future for us? Yeah. Because that, that is our future. So I thank you both very much thank for you. coming thank down you. and uh, talking about climate change, about energy, clean energy, and uh, hope that we can see and hear from you again and the students. It's a deal. Time. Thank you, Denise. Thank Thanks, you, Richard. Before me. <laughs> okay, before me. We'll see yeah. you again soon. Okay. Mahalo. Mahalo, Mahalo, Mahalo to you both. <laughs>